Hey, it's the People Reader, Lisa Mitchell. And I want to first start by saying that I am absolutely heartbroken and devastated for the victims in the Manchester bombings last night. Um, as a mother to a teenage daughter or soon to be teenage daughter, I can't imagine anything more devastating than uh, not knowing where your child is, not knowing if they've been a victim, uh, just having them be surrounded by that experience. I really just can't think of anything that would be more difficult to deal with. So my heart and my prayers go out to the people that are impacted by that. I, I think we're all impacted by it in, in a small way, clearly much smaller than, than the people directly there. But um, I don't know how you exist as a human today and not not feel something about what's going on. And I think it's a really interesting time um, and a really necessary time to really start looking at all the tools that we have as people to say, how can we, just casual observers and people going about our lives, how can we use tools like body language and like nonverbal communication to help protect ourselves, to help keep us safe, to help prevent or maybe sound the alarm on really tragic and sinister things like this. And I wanted to bring it up because there's an article that I read today that was actually a, a witness to the explosion last night in Manchester. And she was saying how they were sitting next to a woman whose nonverbal cues were so off and so out of place and so distinct that she had she had a visceral response to what she was seeing this woman do and the way she was behaving and it really just set off alarm bells in her and so I think listening to our instincts listening to our gut of when something just doesn't fit People's bodies are very honest, and when they're trying to do something to cause harm, if they're trying to, to prepare to commit a crime or to, to be a player in a situation like a bombing or a terrorist act, a lot of times there's signals, there's signs. These people, are their bodies are broadcasting, hey, I don't, I don't fit in here. I don't have the right intentions to be in this space, and that's exactly what this woman who was interviewed was, was conveying. She said, I was there with my daughter and we were sitting next to this woman and, and she, was, she was by herself. She didn't have a, a, a teenager or somebody that would typically be interested in Ariana Grande's music with her. She was by herself. She was clutching a bag and, and, and kept reaching down and touching to make sure her bag was still there. And she kept looking over her shoulder and staring towards an exit which when the performance is in front of you and everyone's excited and all the energy is going towards the artist, to have somebody who's very, very distracted, not engaged in the concert experience and looking over their shoulder, looking for an exit, looking expectantly towards something behind them in a very nervous way, that woman was very right to be picking up the cues on that. And I'm not saying that everyone who doesn't act like, like the rest of the crowd or everyone who looks to be distracted or disengaged as a threat. But what I am saying is that you can identify threats. You can identify mismatches to your environment. You can identify incongruencies with, with the norm. And if you can't easily explain that away by a, a personal situation or, or an interaction or maybe just a brief period of time where, where the mood shifts a little bit, maybe trust your instinct. Like be, be okay sounding the alarm. It's the, the see something, say something, right? Because if you are getting this, this clear indication, if the nonverbal communication that someone is sending you in this environment where there's kind of an expected behavior, uh, and, and everyone else in totality is acting in a certain with a certain mannerism or a, in a in a certain way, but one person or a small group of people, 
I'm not one to operate from a space of paranoia, but that is cause for alarm. We're given instincts. We're given the, the natural ability to read nonverbal behavior and to read body language cues and, and examine those in the context of what we consider normal or customary. We're given those tools as part of our kind of limbic, our limbic brain system that helps keep us alive. Do we freeze? Do we fight? Do we, do we take flight? Those are all instincts that, that we're given. And when you develop an awareness of those, they're really a powerful tool for sounding the alarm on things that are just out of place, things that, that don't make sense. And this, the woman in Manchester at that concert, actually, she did the right thing. She took action and she went to security not one time, but multiple times with her concerns and said, look, something is just off. Something is off with this person. They're, they're not behaving in a way that makes any sense for the environment that they're in. She's very, very nervous, very jumpy, keeps looking at the exit, keeps like looking expectantly like she's waiting for something to happen. And unfortunately, it wasn't taken as seriously as it could have been or the woman wasn't, wasn't questioned by security. And the woman that was reporting it actually took it upon herself to stage an interaction to see what kind of engagement she could get from this woman. So she, she purposely bumped her arm. So she would have an excuse to say, oh gosh, I'm sorry, or I apologize. And then ask, oh, are you here, you know, with, with your daughter? Or are you, are you here with someone watching, you know, who loves Ariana Grande? And she said, no. And then the woman, the woman's story is that then she said something else in, in a language that she couldn't understand. So again, I, I don't know ex exactly all the details and nuances of the article, but, but my main point in sharing this is that she saw an incongruency in body language. She saw nonverbal cues that made no sense for the broader context that she was experiencing them, them in. She listened to her intuition and she took action. And in this case, it didn't, it didn't stop an act of terror. It didn't stop destruction. But at least she took action. And I want to encourage you now more than ever because things are, are getting Things are getting crazy and we really have to use every tool that we have. And, and I don't want to ever say you should live in fear or, or be extra suspicious of everyone. But what I do want to encourage you to do is use the tools that you've been given. Use your ability to decode. Use your intuition. Use the filter of context to say, is what I'm seeing appropriate for where I'm at? Is this person's behavior something that's congruent with everything else going on? Or is there contrast? And if so, what's causing that? Can I tell? And if I can't tell, I should probably be concerned. Just if you see something, say something, especially right now. Be vigilant. And if you say something, and it's not resolved or it's not looked into or the, the, the perceived threat isn't unraveled or taken away, trust your instincts and create space. You may not be able to remove the threat, but you hopefully can see it in enough time, be aware of it enough that you can remove yourself from the threat. There's not any way to guarantee that we're always going to know or we're always going to see somebody's nonverbal cues or behavior when they're planning something bad. We aren't always going to know when someone's planning to attack us or we don't always know when someone's going to going to rob us or we don't always know, you know, when someone is is planning some act of destruction. It's just not it's just not something we can do, but what we can do is be vigilant about paying attention to the cues that people are giving us and not being passive about it. Not just 
scratching our heads and hoping for the best, but really watching and observing and trusting our instincts and taking action when we see something that doesn't make sense. I don't know if body language or if understanding nonverbal communication or decoding cues can stop terrorism. I think that's a little optimistic. But I do believe that understanding how to read nonverbal cues, understanding how to filter what you're seeing from a body language perspective through the right context, trusting your intuition and taking action is going to help keep you safer and hopefully keep the people around you a lot safer too. So keep watching for cues, keep following your intuition, Keep taking action and creating space if you feel that anything's off or there's any type of threat. Use the tools that you have. We have them for a reason. And hopefully it will help make you and your loved ones a little bit safer. Thanks for tuning in.